This video is sponsored by Lexar and their new CF Express Type A Gold Series. Hey, what's going on, people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the cameras on the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The Z Fold 4 actually has an improved camera system from the Z Fold 3, including a 50 megapixel sensor for the main camera. And today, we're gonna to go over several ways to take advantage of this new camera system. So let's talk about that now. So before we get started, I just wanna answer one question that I get asked all the time. A lot of people wanna know, what do I record my videos on? Well, I'm a Sony shooter. Typically, I record on the Sony A1 or the Sony A7S III. Those are the two primary cameras we use in our video production. But right now, I'm actually recording on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which also has a fantastic camera. Now, these are great cameras, but the most important part to any shoot is making sure you have the right media. Now, I use Lexar's new CF Express Type A Gold cards. These are extremely fast, some of the fastest on the market. They're really compact and very very reliable. I always have one of these in one of my Sony cameras. They've never let me down. And the transfer speeds to get your you know, footage off of these cards onto your computer, insanely fast. So make sure to check these out. I'll drop a link down in the description. If you're a Sony shooter, make sure to pick one up. If you're considering a Sony camera that has a CF Express Type A slot, these are the cards to get. You won't be disappointed. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the foldable design on the Z Fold 4, because this design actually gives this phone almost like a built-in tripod because you could set it up just like this. Now, there's a few benefits that come with this design, including the ability to switch your viewfinder from the top portion to the bottom portion, which is great if I'm trying to do like a time lapse on the ground. So I can put my phone just like this. I can be able to monitor what I'm seeing right here, hit recording, and I don't have to get all the way on the ground and look at the screen up top. But also I can fold the phone, set it down like it's a tripod, and then I can walk in front of the camera and I can film myself. I can also set a timer and take a picture of myself. Or if I'm trying to do a group shot, this just makes everything much easier because it has that built-in tripod design. I don't have to prop it up on anything. I don't need an extra accessory to uh, take advantage of this feature. And I can even do it vertical just like that as well. So this brings me to tip number two, and that's if you have a Galaxy watch, you can actually use your watch as a viewfinder and as a shutter trigger for your phone, and it works great. So if you pair this with the built-in tripod feature on the Z Fold 4, I can go out in front of the camera, see what my camera sees, make sure everything looks good, and then trigger the shutter and take a shot or start recording a video. It works in most modes, including portrait, which is really cool. So I can take a portrait photo using my watch, which is awesome but you cannot shoot 8K video using your watch as a viewfinder, which is really, really whack. I have no idea what Samsung is doing with that. Like you can't use the cover screen preview feature with 8K and you can't use the watch viewfinder feature with 8K. So not liking that too much, but in any case, Using the watch as a viewfinder with the fold is definitely awesome because of that built-in tripod feature combined with the viewfinder. Another really cool thing when it comes to the watch integration and the camera on the Z Fold 4 is that I can launch the camera with the watch. So I can go into the watch, open up the camera, tap on open camera, and boom. Now I'm inside the camera app on the Z Fold 4 and it's gonna generate a preview for me. And I didn't even have to have this open previously. So that's pretty cool. And it's gonna resort back to the mode that I was using last, which happens to be portrait mode. So how nice is that? So you might be in a place where you don't have a table to be able to prop this up. All you need is like a little ledge like this. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the phone. I'm gonna unlock the phone, set it up to where the rear cameras are facing towards me. And then I'm gonna go into my watch, tap the open camera button. I'm gonna be able to see exactly what my phone is seeing. And then now I'm gonna walk forward a little bit and hit the shutter button and take a picture, just like that. The next feature that I wanna talk about is cover screen preview. Now I know this isn't a new feature, but if you're new to a foldable phone such as the Z Fold 4, it's something that you definitely should be aware of. And I wanna talk about a few of my favorite features that go with cover screen preview. If you want to enable cover screen preview, what you're gonna do is tap on this little box in the top right inside the camera app. So now cover screen preview is turned on. Now, if I flip the phone around, you can see I have a preview of what my camera is seeing. So as you can see, I'm using the rear facing cameras, which is definitely nice. Now, here's a little tip though. If I go back into the main camera app here, I'm in photo mode right now. If I go under video and then flip this around, you can see it is still working even in video mode, which is awesome. Now it doesn't work in 8K, but it does work in 4K all the way up to 60 frames per second. But if you wanna take this one step further, you can use portrait mode. So if I flip it around, you can see cover screen preview is still enabled, which is awesome. But if I go under more, now this is something I just learned. If I go under pro video, 
check this out. It is still working. So I can use pro mode while using cover screen preview. So I can dial in my settings and then get a quick preview of what I'm taking a video of. And it also works in photo mode. So let's gonna go ahead and back up. Sorry about that. We have a box truck that's making a ton of noise. Story of my life. Go under more. And then we will go under regular pro photo mode, flip it around and boom, cover screen preview is still working. Check this out. Again, I just learned all this stuff. If I go under night mode, cover screen preview is still working. So you can take night mode shots while getting a preview of what the camera is seeing. So definitely check out cover screen preview. It's a great way to take advantage of this foldable design. Instead of wasting your time going through every single mode, I'm just gonna tell you, cover screen preview doesn't work in only three modes. And those three modes are director's view, panorama, and super slow motion. Now, if you want regular slow motion, it still works, but super slow motion, not so much. So those are the only three modes where you can't use cover screen. That's pretty cool. The next little tip or trick that I have for you is about macro. Now, unfortunately, the Z Fold 4 does not come with a macro mode. It doesn't have focus enhancer, which makes me ask the question, why Samsung? Why doesn't this phone have focus enhancer? It does have an ultra wide, just like the S22 series, but why doesn't this get the same macro capabilities? Sorry, I had a bug crawling on me, that was weird. Let's talk about the macro mode again. There is a workaround. So let me show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a close shot of the pavement here because it has a lot of texture. So first things first, I'm going to go into photo mode. Then I'm gonna tap on where it says three by four. I'm gonna switch over to three by four 50 megapixel. And then I'm gonna tap on detail enhancer, which is this little pattern circle in the bottom right. Toggle that on. Now I'm gonna hold my hand as steady as possible. Tap to focus. Remember, hold it as steady as possible and try to get it nice and level. Get as close as you can. So about right there and snap the shot. Now from here, I'm gonna go into my editor here and pull up the photo. And then I'm going to crop in to get it nice and close. So about like right there, tap save. Now I'm gonna tap on the three little dots in the bottom right and then tap on remaster photo. Give it a second to analyze everything and to um, you know, do its magic. And there we go. So this is before and that's after. That's pretty close to macro capabilities. Now I get it, this isn't a replacement for a macro camera, but it's pretty damn close. Just like other Samsung phones, the Z Fold 4 has an excellent photo and video editor, but having this large screen on the inside definitely helps take advantage of that editor and it makes edits a little bit easier. So let's go over a few of my favorite features inside the built-in editor. The first feature that I wanna talk about is the ability to turn a non-portrait shot into a portrait shot. This is really cool. And it also includes the 50 megapixel mode in the camera app. So check this out. I'm gonna go into the camera app, make sure that 50 megapixel is turned on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn on detail enhancer, enable cover screen preview, frame myself up here. So we'll do something like this and then take the picture. Now we're gonna go into the gallery here. You see that is a picture of my ugly mug. If I zoom in, yep, that is definitely me. If I go into the info here and go under details, you can see it is in fact a 50 megapixel photo. I'm gonna go ahead and back up. Now I'm gonna tap on the three little dots in the bottom right, tap on add portrait effect, give it a minute to do its thing. Shouldn't take long and boom, it's done. I can increase the blur or I can decrease the blur to make it a little bit more realistic. If I'm happy with it, I can tap apply and there is my shot. And if you're wondering if it retains all of those 50 megapixels, well, let's check. Tap on the three little dots, go under details. It does not, it definitely compressed it to a little bit higher than 12 megapixels, but it still has all of that detail which I'm a fan of. The actual editor on the Z Fold 4 is also fantastic. To get to that, you're gonna wanna pull up a photo, like I have this one here. You're gonna tap on the little pencil icon and then that will pull up the built-in editor. Now from here, you can do all of your cropping or you can pick a filter. Now what I love about the filters is if I swipe over one, it's gonna automatically decide what filter it thinks is best using AI. And I think for the most part, it does a great job. But if you're not happy with that, you can scroll through and find the filter that you want there's quite a few to choose from, and you can also download more from the Galaxy Store. So if you find a filter you're happy with, you can dial back the intensity just like so. So other than that, if I tap on this little icon that looks like a sun here, these are all my basic adjustments. So I have light balance, brightness, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and 
quite a few more. Next to my basic controls here, I have like a little smiley face and this is where I can draw on the photo if I want to draw something or I can add stickers. So if I wanna add a sticker, I could do that as well or I can add text to a photo. So I don't really use this part of the editor too much but I know some people might be interested and that's how you do all that. But overall, I really do like the editor on all Samsung phones but having this extra large display makes the editing experience on the Z Fold 4 second to none. If for some reason you don't feel like going into the editor and you know doing all your cropping or assigning a filter or doing any adjustments and you just want a good looking shot without having to do any of the work, easy. I have a photo right here pulled up. I think it looks pretty good as it is but it could probably be better. I'm just going to tap on this little magic wand in the bottom left. It's going to analyze the shot and not only will it do adjustments in terms of like exposure and stuff, it'll also crop it and reframe it to give you a better looking photo. Look at that. So this is the original shot next to the AI edited shot. What do you think? I think this is a great way for you to get a good photo without having to do a ton of work. So there's actually another way to get an easy edit to a photo without having to go into the editor and tap on this little magic wand. It's called remaster, which I kind of already showed you with the macro mode, but you can do this to any photo. It doesn't do any cropping for you. It only brings out more details and enhances the photos through color, exposure, and contrast, things like that. So I got a photo pulled up here. I'm gonna tap on the three little dots in the bottom right, and then I'm gonna tap on remaster photo. It uses AI, so let it do its thing. It's processing and analyzing the photo. So this is before, and this is after. It just made it a little bit brighter without losing any of the detail or washing anything out or anything like that. So it does a pretty good job overall. It's not perfect, so don't expect this to work on every single photo. So if I find a different photo such as, let's go into this photo here. See, it's already a pretty good looking shot, but we'll go ahead and remaster it and see what we can do. There we go. So this is before and after. Again, very, very slight. This is what I'm saying. Like, it may not be a huge difference or it may actually make the photo worse. It just depends. So use it um, sparingly, but overall it's a great feature and a great way to get an edit done extremely quick. So the next thing that I wanna show you is the ability to remove reflections, shadows, or even objects. So what we're gonna do is go into the editor here. We're gonna go under the three little dots in the bottom right, and then we're gonna tap on object eraser. Now from here, I can remove the shadows in the shot. So if I tap on erase shadows, you'll see this huge shadow disappear. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So I can tap done if I'm happy with it. And I'm gonna go back under the three little dots, tap on object eraser, let it analyze, and now I'm gonna erase an object in the shot. So I'm gonna erase these spots right here, and then tap on erase, and look at that. It completely cleaned it up. So I can even do these two, and done. So that's really, really cool. Now the reflections eraser I haven't had um, a good time with. I'm not getting good results, so I don't really recommend using it. If you've had good results using the reflections eraser, let me know, but as for me, I don't really recommend using it. I just don't see a ton of benefit at this point. But all the other stuff, excellent. The last thing that I wanna show you inside of the editor has to do with pictures that have a face in them. So you can see I have a picture of myself here. There's a face. If I go into the editor and then tap on the three little dots, I can pull up face effects. Now from here, I can smooth out my skin. I can adjust the tone of my skin. I can adjust my jawline. I can adjust my eyes. But the one that I wanna focus on is Spot Fixer. This is really, really interesting. So I'm gonna increase the size of the, the marking. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna remove my tattoo here. So let's go ahead and fill all of this in and check this out. It's going to remove my tattoo. Look at that. Kinda of messed up here down at the bottom. See if we can fix it. Now, if I get rid of that one last spot, let's zoom out. How crazy is that? Y'all know that is boss. So you can remove a tattoo right here on your phone. If I zoom in, like it doesn't look extremely natural, but if I keep going, I can smooth it out. And there you go. I think from a distance, that looks fine. Perfect for social media if I'm trying to clean up my tattoos a little bit. So outside of having an excellent photo editor and just an excellent camera in general, you can also take raw photos on the Z Fold 4 and you can do this two different ways. Let's talk about those now. So the first way to enable raw is inside of the stock camera app. What you're gonna do is go into your settings, tap on picture formats, and then toggle on raw copies. What this does is it saves a JPEG and a raw copy. So you have a 
copy that is ready to go straight out of camera with all of the AI processing. And then you also have a raw copy that you can do all of your tweaking. So if I back up, go under more, and then tap on pro because you have to be in pro mode in order to take advantage of raw, and then take a quick shot like so, and then pull up that picture. The first picture, if I go into the details, you can see is a JPEG. But let's go into the second photo, which is this one. I can tap on the three little dots, tap on details, and you can see the file size is much bigger and it is a raw photo. Now there's also another way to get raw. This is 12-bit raw. If you want even more flexibility, you can go into the Galaxy Store. So let's go into the Galaxy Store. And then you do a search for Expert Raw. And you should see it pop up right here. Go ahead and download that. I've already downloaded it. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. What this app does is it gives you 16-bit raw. So way more control and way more flexibility to be able to push around those colors and really grade your image. And on top of that, if I go into the settings here, let's see. If I go into the settings, which are right here, I can toggle on high efficiency raw, which gives me really good high quality raw, but at a lower file size. So that way I can, you know, conserve some of that space on my phone. I also have tracking autofocus and several other things in here. If I back up, I can switch to the different lenses. So I have ultra wide, my standard, and then my telephoto. A lot of stuff that I can do here, tons of flexibility, all of your manual controls. I'm telling you, Expert Raw is where it's at if you're trying to capture a raw photo. You have your histogram at the top and just a lot of stuff that you can do here. I absolutely love Expert Raw. It's a free app. Make sure to give it a try. Download it. It doesn't matter if you have a Z Fold 4, Z Fold 3, S22. Download it, give it a try, and let me know in the comments what you think. I actually did a dedicated video on Expert Raw, so if you missed that video, make sure to click the card up top I go over the full app capabilities, how to edit the photos, and what you can do with those photos in terms of color and exposure, and how 16-bit compares to 12-bit. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. Make sure to check out that video. One really cool feature inside of the Z Fold 4 camera is autofocus tracking. Think of this like autofocus tracking on like a Canon camera or a Sony camera where you touch and then it tracks that subject. You can actually do that on this phone. If you wanna turn on autofocus tracking, what you're gonna do is go into your camera app, go into the settings, scroll down until you get to tracking autofocus and then toggle that on. Now check this out. If I hold my hand out here and then tap on it, you can see it's going to track my hand perfectly. I can go out and I can go in and look, I'm in video mode. So if I switch from 4K 30 to 4K 60, hold my hand out here, tap it and then move it around. You can see it is still tracking me. So this works in 4K all the way up to 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, it does not work in 8K, but if I switch to photo mode and then hold my hand out, tap on my hand, you can see it's also working in photo mode. So this is a great way to get action shots as well as my next tip, which we'll go over right now. One thing that has plagued Samsung cameras for a long time and a lot of users complain about it is shutter lag. Now, personally, I've never had an issue with this, but I know a lot of people that have. They go to take a picture of their kid, their kid is moving and the picture comes out blurry because there's a slight delay from when you hit the shutter to when the camera actually takes the shot. Now the way around this is to use the tracking autofocus feature that I just showed you as well as burst shots. Let me show you how to do that now. So to test this out, I'm gonna have Dennis take a picture of me jumping off of this ledge in action. So that way, you know, it captures the moment. There's no blurriness or anything like that. First and foremost, he needs a touch on me to start tracking me. Am I tracked? We're good, thumbs up. Okay, we're good. Now, I'm gonna jump off of this ledge. Right before I jump, he's gonna swipe to the right on the shutter button, and that's gonna trigger the burst mode. Here we go. One, two, three. And then now, let's see what we got. Okay, so let's check out the results here. Let's go ahead and go into the gallery, find the burst shots, which are right here. You can see he took 36 photos in a split second. So the burst shot feature on the Z Fold 4 is top notch. Let's go ahead and tap on where it says 36. And from here, I can view all of the photos that he took. So let's go ahead and find the best one. I kind of like this one right here. Looks like I'm getting a lot of air. So I'll select it and then I'll save this one photo. It also gives you the choice to delete the rest of them if you don't need any more. So we'll go ahead and go to that shot. And there it is. So now from here, I can crop in. I can remaster it if I want and I can bring this into the editor and make it a little bit better. And that is how you can get a photo that is not blurry, but still an action shot. 
You can also do this using 8K video. So I also had him record an 8K video of me jumping off that little ledge. So here's the video right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this play. You can see this is in 8K. So if I go into the details, you can see the resolution right here. Now check this out. I can tap on the video and then scrub to a point where it's pretty clear and I'm in the air. So like maybe that one right there. And then from there, I can tap on this little circle on the left-hand side, and that will grab a still from this video. And because it's 8K, that still will be very high resolution, higher than 30 megapixels. So now if I back up and then find that picture, which is right here, and then go into the details, you can see it is a very high resolution photo. And then from here, I can crop in, I can remaster it, and make it a little bit better. So that is how you can get an action shot on the Z Fold 4 using the burst shot feature as well as 8K video. And honestly, this is probably the only use that I have for 8K video is for grabbing a still because outside of that, the feature is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's very underwhelming, but this is great use for it and probably the best use for it. So make sure you take advantage of 8K for photography. Speaking of that shutter button, this one's for all my left-handed people out there. You're gonna love this. Check this out. Using this phone while it's open can be kind of hard when it comes to taking a picture. If you're right-handed, it's fine, but if you're left-handed, trying to reach your thumb way over there is very difficult, if not impossible, unless you have like Stretch Armstrong, Fantastic Four capabilities with your thumb. But what you could do is just drag on the shutter and move it. So I can move the shutter here and boom. And when I'm done with it, I can touch and hold and then hit the little minus sign, or I can just bring it back to its home until I feel a slight vibration. And that's how you can move the shutter button anywhere you want to make it a little bit easier to take a picture while the phone is unfolded. Really useful. You can also use this on the cover display if you want. So the last thing that I wanna talk about is a question that you guys have asked me a ton, and that's what about motion photos when it comes to Galaxy devices? And don't worry, it's still there. What you need to do is go into the camera app, go under photo, up at the top, there's like a little box with the play symbol, just toggle that on. And then now you can capture a photo with a little bit of video. So let me go ahead and pull up one that I just took. So I have one right here. You can see there's my picture. And if I tap on view motion photo, you can see it has a little bit of video with that picture. Now what you can do is tap on the three little dots down here, tap on export, and you can export it as a video or as a GIF or GIF. We'll go ahead and export as a GIF. You can select the portion that you want. So we'll say we want that one right there. And I can tap on save up at the top and it will actually save it. I can make it go back and forth. So it's like a boomerang. I can have it go forward only or I can have it go backwards. So there you go. That was several camera tips and tricks for your brand new Galaxy Z Fold 4. There's actually a lot more that I could talk about, but I need to break this video up into two segments. So if you wanna see a video on how to edit videos on the Z Fold 4, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions. Huge thanks to Lexar once again for sponsoring this video. I swear, if Samsung had a micro SD card slot still on their phones, I'd be using Lexar micro SD cards, but um, fortunately they don't. So with that being said, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.